everyone, welcome back to the JNC Collectibles channel. Uh, I am Shimping Xu. Today I'm bringing you another regional deck profile of what I did in the past weekend. Before we get to start, uh, here are some shout outs. Shout out to my team JNC, fantastic sponsor, great teammates, uh, very helpful, very supportive. Uh, shout out to uh, some of the sponsor, uh, du uh, Dragon Inc. and Dueling Guard. And remember to use J code JNC5 for 5% 5 off on their products for uh, from their website. So I guess uh, let's start the deck profile. So this past weekend, I went to technically two regionals. Saturday, I went to Upper New York uh, at Catskill. We had a 300-something, 301, 304 people with a nine round of tournament. Um, I played uh, uh, Iron X2 after nine rounds. Uh, did well, fairly okay, and then someday there was a remote regional on side deck, and it was uh, about also a hundred, hundred ten people with seven rounds. I did X one one with nearly the same deck. Uh, let me see. So I guess without further, let's hop into deck list. This is. As you can see, a very standard rescue is post of balance. Uh, about a month ago, balance drop airlifter went to one. At the very beginning, I kind of gave up on the deck because I think the consistency isn't meeting what I want to be um, for for me to comfortably play in regional level or higher. But after experiencing several other decks in the past couple weekend, um, that. Those didn't go as well as I thought to be. That's why also why you didn't see me posting any deck profiles for the past couple weekend. Because I wasn't performing as good as I wanted. So at the end, uh, yeah, funny enough, I just go back to race. There's obviously things I learned. I uh, modified the current race deck. And, and as you see, there are some interesting different choices that like different than a lot of other people doing. So I guess we'll go over some of the monster and card, whatever. Uh, two turb, two preventer, three hydrant. Uh, I think three is a must. As everyone see, there's only one airlifter. The consistency is kind of issue. So I max out as many starters as I can. So max out hydrant as well. Then two impulse, uh, one fire engine, or one fire attacker, four impulse. On Saturday at Catskill, I, I played three impulse because at that point I only owned two Diabelle and I wasn't able to get it the third one before the tournament. So I had to play only two Diabelle with three impulse. And then I got it from my friend later that day. So on Sunday, I played three Diabelle. I still want to play three impulse, not gonna lie. I think impulse is a decent hand trap in the current format. But I really cannot see myself cutting any other cards in the deck. So at the end, yeah, I just reduced impulse to two, which still did the job. I still see it fairly often, and then uh, pretty glad I played two actually. And fire attacker is like quote unquote the new addition compared to how I played race before. Um, that's also one of the things because I tested a like a fire king race list more focusing on fire king than race because that list has like uh it's pretty much a standard snake eye fire, fire king deck but the, the snake eye ash can also get hydrant with a small uh hydrant preventer impulse fire attacker engine no turb or turb targets uh that kind of list and during that time i realized i really liked the fact I can go impulse into fire attacker on a, like opponent search and then hope to draw like a copy of Diabell and pitch pitch the Diabell with fire attacker. That way I trigger the Diabell in my opponent's turn and suddenly I have a Diabell at the beginning of my, uh, before I even begin my turn and Diabell by itself can get into either more way to combo or another interruption or force out of some negations. Which I like that aspect a lot from that list I build. And so I kind of incorporate it into the race list. Um, and Diabelle, on the other hand, is also one of the most important starter cards of race decks. So obviously, maxing out has no big problems. 
and uh, Diabell, the entire Wanted package, is probably the best cards currently in our TCG card pool. And I feel like not playing the max of them is just, like, if you can afford it, obviously. If you can, maxing uh, or co maxing copies of all these will be, like, nearly a must in every deck. Or at least I will play some deck that can max it. And then I guess we'll skip the non engine a little bit and go back to it at the end. Uh, the other engine, like the field, emergency, alert, rescue, standard, wanted package that said the best cards in the format. Uh, one for one, the Rhoda are the, like, uh, like the, they are the airlifter replacements. Because even back then, I wasn't even playing Rhoda since draw is kind of very common. Now, draw is still very common, but the deck just like, cannot function if i don't start so i'd rather just take the risk of get stopped by draw at least i have the chance to play if i don't get draw so yeah and a three pot pot is still good but pa i kind of start doing like i i end on he so a lot more than i realized so pa has not been doing that well most of the time or wasn't as needed most of the time but obviously it's pa after siding i use pot to dig for side cards so yeah, pause definitely the best thing. One well, of the best thing if I can run three. And then let's skip this one. Uh the two target, the two tarped bricks I do draw, and a third brick, quote unquote. Um this is another sync for spoil that can be set of Diabell. That I don't see a lot of people, well, I don't see anyone else really playing it in at least race deck. Why? Because it's another trap, it's quote unquote another brick that you can draw. But if I hypothetically don't play this, I think it will most likely become Call by Grave, which is still a non-engine, which does, which means it's still kind of quote-unquote bricks, or another copy of Impulse. However, with the existence of this trap, Silveria, um, it gave me a different layer of combo that I can do. In situation where I get to go first, I... Obviously, there are 60 copies of Diabells in the deck, with additional of pots. Um, with this many of Diabell in the deck, it's very possible that if I'm able to combo, I can save the Diabell. In, like, instead of using Diabell as a starter, I can just play with other cards and use this later. When that happens, if I do still perform my whole combo, my ending board could be something like a Turb set 4 with Diabell setting this trap. This trap is a fast saying, send the Diabell monster from my hand or field to graveyard, then target a face-up card on the field, negate permanently. Um, it's a it's a normal trap, so essentially it can just it's an omni negate to nearly everything on the field. That the downside is it will kind of require Diabell to be set on the field, or if you have additional Diabell in hand to use that. The good thing is whenever this resolve, because like this cost send the Diabell. Uh, from hand of field, it will trigger Diabell's graveyard effect in your opponent's turn. So yeah, I, I get I get a free Diabell back after resolving this, which turned this into like a built-in interruption and at the same time strong follow-up as one card, and that's how powerful this trap is. With this amount of Diabell, it's likely I I can to push for combo without Diabell and use this to set it. I I remember doing the regional tournament I played yesterday. Uh, I had a game where I start my turn with just like race cards, and I I play into one hand trap and it was like he so four, and my he so ripped a wanted, so I just wanted get a Diabell. Diabell sent one of the trap of the turb, summon it, and then I uh emergency to reset the trap back. So this this, this Diabell become free. The Diabell's uh, set the severity for my deck. So my ending was just like, he sold Diabell with five known sets. But this is an omni negate, so it kind of it just prevented my board even get break by like lining storm or evenly or something. And yeah, my opponent automatically, like, guaranteed just not breaking it. So this, um, I also do have another game where, where I roll open all three of these traps. And, uh, I still won that game after grinding. <laughs> But yeah, it, there's definitely the risk and reward, but I think the reward at the moment is worth the risk.
and I like to play it. Then I guess go back to a little bit of non-engine. Ash, Valor, Super Poly are the only non-engine I play at the moment in the main deck in this version. Couple of reasons. We are right now in a very weird format. Like a lot of people don't really have any tournaments um, during this one month weird gap time. Everyone just start focusing on post Phantom Nightmare, uh, Phantom Nightmare stuff. And then the online tournaments are also just all post Phantom Nightmare. That resulted, um, oh, well, like me, I have regionals to grind. So I kind of still have to, unlike others, be serious to this current format and for hopefully to do well. And uh, so this format right now, there's it, it's weird. A lot of people, like, we don't see that meta-centric. When I go to the regional, it's kind of everyone's playing their own thing. So I feel like the more generic coverage thing will be better in a main deck. However, there are scary decks. Lab is definitely one of them because rollback now is a thing. Um, bonfire is also a thing, but no decks can really utilize Bonfire yet. So Bonfire hasn't really become that relevant. But, but rollback is definitely a scary deck um, or scary thing from the lab deck that I kind of have to respect it. So out of the out of those, Ash and Super Poly become one of the first choices I look at it. And then uh, Super Poly is also good. It covers the Farkin matchup and Manadian matchup, which is the other two that I'm scared of. Oh, as well as Race Mirror, for obvious reasons. Um, because Super Poly serves this big of a coverage, it's also something good that I can just impose first hope to even fire attacker draw into it and have a super poly to start my turn with this kind of logic here i ended up choosing super poly super poly and andrew's winning winning me so many games out of uh out of the two regionals i played and right like if i can if anyone can like having spaces in the extra deck i think super poly is like the best non-engine right now ash on the other hand honestly Outside against Labyrinths, Ash is really mid to even bad. It usually doesn't do enough. It usually, like, isn't as needed. Like, yes, it's a fire, but whenever I get to Sunlight Wolf, Ash is usually in my hand instead of already being used in the graveyard. So it's like, that. this doesn't... Like, Sunlight Recycle Ash usually doesn't happen. The game doesn't go that far. But it's, like, because Lab, because it's coverage from ads and still an Ash, I still I know still playing it in the main. Vader, you, it, it was imperm. However, with like originally three impulse, impulse into fire attacker, fire attacker draw into an imperm feels very horrible. <laughs> so because of that, I replaced imperm with Vader. Vader also being a spellcaster uh, that turned on Selene, which is also the additional thing that imperm doesn't have. Imperm also kind of like conflicting with Super Poly and the other like Turf set four because sometimes my backwards don't even, don't even have enough spaces. So at the end I was like Imperm, yeah. It's also not as good against specifically Lab or even Fire King. So at the end I was like, yeah, Vader is probably the better one, um, just because this um, uh, the the Impulse Fire Attacker uh, synergy with it. So yeah, and Vader become the the other choices of my now engine. And as you see, I have the rest of my hand traps in the side deck. Like game one, it's like it's very the format is kind of a uh, you know good variety, and the the best decks all lose to different things. So it's very hard to build the non-engine portion to cover everything. Which at this point, I'm just saying I'm covering like a good amount. Super Poly already have a good coverage, so I just played the best, most generic two, and I have the specific ones in the side. Draws for Manadium. Honestly, really specific Manadium. Maybe some random other decks that I can't really think of at the moment, but it's really mid against a lot of other decks. Um, even like Fire King, uh, if if I play against some like Snake Eye specific combo Fire King, yeah, draw is good. But if I get to play like just pure like Elephant Beatdown Fire King, yeah, draw is pretty bad. So yeah, so 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 draws per I that's why I prefer draw in the side because it's not guaranteed working well a hundred percent of the time. Crow, it's okay against lab. It's very good against Fire King. It's nearly 
doing nothing against everything else. So it's another card better in the side. Bell as well. Bell is very good against Lab. Very okay against Far King. Nearly useless against everything else. So yeah. With these amount of hand traps in my side, I can definitely just swap different like engine pieces, non-engine pieces in different matchup and have like still a good coverage of after siding. Um, I definitely have lost like a variety game once, but I ended up back during game two and three because I still have enough tools on my side. So yeah, I think serving nine more spots in for the hand traps are okay. Um, so I guess we'll skip this one. Duster for the mirror match, despite it's, it's only one of, but it's Duster. This is like the only good back removal, especially the back removal that's like good after I impose already. Impose kind of conflicting with Lightning Storm and Evenly. So at the end of the year, Duster is probably the better one. It's, it's probably the only one. Um, Silent Gravier, in my opinion, is the deep barrier against some decks that doesn't lose to deep barrier. Which specifically talking about Lab, Tear, uh, Fire King, and I guess that's the majority ones. Um, it's also a good thing because it's a quick play spell. It works going second. Like, uh, I I remember on Saturday I played against Fire King guy. He ended on I think Hiso, uh, Arvada, with next turn Baron. Baron get curing with Ponyx coming back and Grunix in the graveyard. That kind of board. Some back rows. My turn, I look at my hand. Okay, my game plan was simple. Super poly the board uh, for the Arvada and Hiso. And then Silent Graveyard, lock everything else. And that well, that pretty much just sealed the game, I think. So, uh, uh, so yeah. Against Lab, it's uh, tricky to use it in the right timing. But when they use it right, it definitely will hurt the lab opponent a lot. It's also something that shuts down rollback along with DD Crow. So having three Crow, three Silent Gravier, it's it's a very good amount of respect to lab, in my opinion, or to rollback specifically. Uh, I, I also remember I side these things against one of the virtual world player I faced. Uh, the the main game plan was uh, Beatrice double sends like send rollback and the trap they want to copy to just flug me for a turn. Uh, I just hand trap him down with the other things. But they didn't get to use Crow or Silent Graveyard, but I definitely side the main and feel safe against that matchup for that specific situation. And the last two cards, Sprint and Scatter Shot. I used to play Cowboy for the time, uh, but Airlifter now is a 1, there's not enough level 4s in the deck. I don't want to play Monitor, or even I do, it's 2 spots anyway. So at the end, I just choose Sprint plus Scatter Shot. we we'll still do the job. Any 3 monsters doing that. Um, the race that I do grind a lot, well, should be grinding a lot, that kind of a time card will be required. But realistically, when I play that, I think I either just win dice rolls or I just scoop very fast. I don't, I didn't really get, I didn't really use these cards at all during the past weekend. So uh, these two, if time is never a thing, I think these two will be actually just the barrier for Manadium. But for the fact I have Typhon in my extra deck to cover that matchup uh, with some draws and other hand traps and super parties. I think not having the deep bear is okay. Like there are significantly less amount of pure leaves uh, existing, so the importance of deep bear isn't as much anymore. And then the extra deck, I, I guess I forgot to cover. It's pretty much standard; as it hasn't really changed. Uh, more than like about thirteen of those should be staples or standard to any race deck. Two SP, IP, double charmer, Hiso, Saling, Apple Axis. Sunlight, all and Kribo, and then obviously the two super party targets. Uh, I thought about playing Gear Freed, the Iron Knight. Uh, this guy will require two warriors with different attributes, specifically for IP Baron. It turned out most of my Manadium I play tested ended on either. Uh, so, whatever Link monster they put on the top, either being Appalooza or Little Knight can be fused with one other synchro monster they summon. It will be either IP, uh, no, it will be SP, 
Death Patter or Appaloosa Baron into Mud Dragon. So at the end, I was like, well, Gear 3 is probably not as needed. Um, so I just didn't play it again. Yeah, so overall, this is the less. It definitely has some of the ideas that I practiced in the last couple of weeks in other decks that didn't make to the top cut. Um, but overall, I'm pretty happy about it. This format is also ending. I think I have like one or two more regionals left, and we will be completely going to post Phantom Nightmare format. And by then, I hope I can provide anyone some uh, cool top deck profiles. That being said, uh, thanks for watching. If you like the video, please subscribe to the JNC channel and my own channel. And I will see everyone in the next one. Goodbye.